Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. You talk too pretty for a marauder. Most of them just grunt and yell. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Definitely not the Junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. What's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Got a knack for being discreet-like? There's money to be made, long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board-owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see? Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Huh? What? I wasn't dozing off. He's working at the cannery. Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. Just the way it goes, I suppose. Hey, you hear about Wilson? Heard Marauder's gone in. Just between us? Wilson deserted. Lost his nerve. Ran off in the thick of night. 
You kidding me? Damn. Damn. Always thought he was made of sterner stuff. I think he was plagued. Guess he didn't want to die in the sick house. Plagued? Ah, oh, shit. I had some of the salt too, but... You moron. Monkey Argo. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Shirt, pants, work boots, company-approved colors, the, uh... Honorable apparel of a loyal worker? Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Oh, yes. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we buried him. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. I am not trying to pull one over on you, friend. You were bound to run into them sooner or later. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Hedgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. That is not a hypothetical I enjoy entertaining. We need Adelaide back. Nonetheless, I will settle for the return of her followers. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented. 
and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine, and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Are you sure? I imagine Miss Holcomb will make a reliable companion. She knows her way around the Vale. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set! Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Hey, ma'am, can we talk? Sorry. Sorry. I. You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just, Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters, on account of it's his job and, and what all, but that's not the only side of the tale. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. I don't know anybody, well. I mostly listen to them talk, get my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Miss McDevitt? Oh, gosh, no. She was a real important person. A flavorist. Made all the food taste decent. She used to work up in the big office with Mr. Thompson. All I know is, she left after her son died. It was a real big to-do. I could hear them both yelling clear from my own place. Can't say as I know, I wasn't there. The sound carried, but not the words. If Mr. Thompson ain't of a mind to tell you his own self, you'd best ask Miss McDevitt, if he can get out to her. Life's hard here, especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Thanks, ma'am. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, 
Mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know Eugene was an asset to us all. May his Adams be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. Something you need? That's on account of how I never met her. It's hard to miss what you never knew. I don't ponder it over much. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born, I got sent here. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of crazy math, high level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers.
I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. A geo what? Look, plants ain't my purview. You're better off asking after Adelaide. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on you. Over in the hothouse, tending crop. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. Much obliged. Oh, that's Thomas. He used to follow me around before he left the cannery. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobaccorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Hobson, you here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? I can't say I blame you. Reed is positively soporific. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. I trust you will listen to your conscience. If 
you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Keep your wits about you, friend. Keep your wits about you, friend. If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Keep. If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Heads down.
Heads down. to poke around in here. The control room should be off. Right. I hope we're doing the right thing. Oh, performing in area.
Three switches. That'll be easy enough. happen to Miss McDevitt's folk if we send power to the Vale? No, 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 just leave me alone! Steam, you're liable to get scalded. Performing an aerial speak now. the power to Miss McDevitt, what happens to the veil?
existence. Wait. Incoming! That's the last of them! The last? I'm not sure what the ride is. All I know is the decision's final. Just leave me alone. Once we do this, there's no going back. Excuse me, ma'am. Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something.
I can't stop thinking on Edgewater, Captain. I'm glad the deserters are gonna be all right now they got power, but... What about the town? All those people? Unexpected. Here they come! System. Unexpected performing. Process searching for unauthorized You want to know what gets my bile churning? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters, plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? Is I right? I'm dying to hear this. Please, educate me. Liberating? Edgewater is my home. The only home I've ever had. I put down roots here, gave decades of my life to this place. I never asked to be liberated. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you.
Mom. for me. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but that don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. I have imagined it, but until you came along, I never thought I had the choice. I want to ask you something, and you can say no, but can I come with you? I could tend to your engine, I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. 
What do you think? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I never got along with Mr. Thompson, but I don't think he deserved to die. He tried to do his best. I don't know about that. Mr. Thompson wasn't an evil man. He wasn't given to violence. Though if Miss McDevitt were here, I'd... Wager she'd agree with you. I had my misgivings about Miss McDevitt and the deserters, but... You took pity on them. And sent power to their garden, even though you knew Mr. Thompson would hate you for it. All this time, you've been determined to get your regulator back, get your ship up and running, and cut a path out of this place. And well, I want it. Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you. Across the cargo bay, up the ladders. <laughs> 